Welcome, Jeff Weber. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Great to see you, man. It's so nice to have some great soul music in the beautiful Griffith Park area here. Tell us about how this all all came together and how you got involved. I've been a record producer for about 20 years. I've done about 200 records. I have multiple Grammys and multiple Grammy nominations, and I do a lot of live concerts and live events. The creator of the Los Angeles Soul Music Festival, Mark Douglas, and I have been friends and associates before this. He asked me to come on board to produce all the performances. Okay. And so uh, that's how we got this party started. Fantastic. So he had the concept to bring soul music and, and wine and all the great, uh, beautiful things out here. And so you guys bounced around the town. How long did it take to put together the, uh, the lineup? The lineup actually began in late summer of last year. It took a lot of time to capture the relevance of each particular artist, their sales history, uh, whether or not they have a new record that's coming out so that we can promote that and they can promote the festival. A lot of variables took place in order to effectuate the proper lineup. I think we did a really good job. Yeah. The public seems to be pretty happy. Enjoyed it so far. Can't wait for day three coming right up. Now, um, to get the word out, was it mainly KGLH radio or what, what was the... What's the concept to get the audience out? I think that there was a multi-pronged uh, strategy dealing with not only KJLH, but uh, a few more radio stations, uh, Billboard, uh, K-Day, uh, a lot of uh, various internet outlets, uh, and, and, you know, people talking to people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. word of mouth. So how long ago was it announced? Oh gosh, I think it was announced there, uh, about two or three months ago. Okay, you know, not uh, a whole lot of time. Uh, well, I, I may be wrong about that, but uh, I think that, uh, well, now that I think of it, yes, exactly okay. right, about okay. February, March of this year. But I guess with so much competition in the L.A. market, you don't, you don't, you don't need a lot of advance. You well, just need the right bill and the right location. I think this is an underserved market for soul music, mm -hmm. and I think that a quality product such as this is lacking in Los Angeles, and Mark was the first one to recognize that. And I believe that we're the, we're the only festival of its kind in Los Angeles and that has done this high level of work. I mean, this is not... This is a, a festival where the sonics and the staging and the lighting and the audio and the video are world class. Yeah. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not fly by night. It's something yeah. that took us well over a year to conceptualize and, and configure and develop. So we wanted to provide the consumer with a positive experience so that uh, they would have a, a, a great, great feeling and enjoy the music. And the music is bumping. Yeah, and the word of mouth is going to carry over to the future, no doubt. Right. Everybody leaves here happy. That's now, right. as far as your feeling, as far as where soul music or kind of a return to the roots, so to speak, because so much music with technology has gotten easier to produce, easier to put out, you know, a lot of auto-tuning and all that, but we all grew up with great singers, great players, memorable songs, right. you know. What's your feeling as far as the evolution of soul music and where you know music like this is heading for the future well I, I'm a big fan of soul music I actually grew up on bands like the Watts 103rd Street Rhythm Bands uh, band and all the wonderful stacks Volt and Motown product I happen to like that type of music more yeah. than just about anything I'm a fan of rhythm and the groove is essential to all of us because our bodies are rhythm based so as far as soul music is concerned you know we've had a kind of an evolution of soul music mm -hmm. and uh, now soul music has all these little mini configurations you know neo soul and old school soul and, uh, but I, I do think that it all is based on the ultimate R&B groove okay it's very infectious yeah. it's engaging it's invigorating and you can't not want to move <laughs> no doubt about it now as far as where you spin this off I know you haven't made any official announcements but is it gospel? Is it funk? Is it where? Where? Where can you spin this off and kind of build on this success? I'm not sure uh, what's going to happen next. I know Mark has some thoughts about that, and he'll make the ultimate decision. Uh, we've talked about quite a few things, and uh, more of these type events for sure, and, and maybe gospel and some Latin. Uh, you know, this is a great market for that, and. 
I think there's a lot of jazz already. I don't know if we need to do that, but uh, we'll figure it out. Maybe some one-offs. You never know. I mean, yeah. So it's uh, it's a real interesting situation, and the ultimate I, the ultimate concept is to keep the level of quality very very high and the consumer expectation delivered. Sure. And talk about the location. Where, how did you decide on this location, and how has it worked out for you? Uh, again, uh, this location is a hidden gem. I've done events here before, but not too many people know about the Autry Museum and the space around it. It's a very large green area, very conducive to events like this. Uh, and Great the, parking, freeway clothes. In Los that. Angeles, if you mention the word, if you mention the word free parking, you already have an ally, <laughs> you know, because in Los Angeles you can't get free parking anywhere, right? You know, it's like, hey man, this is the thing, you know, we, we just saved ourselves 20 bucks, you right. know, maybe 40. Yeah. Uh, so free parking is always a good thing. Yeah. And, and uh, we're, I, I think we'll be back here again. Great. Well, we uh, love it. Close, close to Hollywood, close to downtown, close to the valley, close to Glendale, Pasadena. Shh, Definitely. don't tell anybody. <laughs> Best kept secret. <laughs> well, as far as your evolution as a record producer and live concert promoter and everything, what advice do you have to Youngtown coming up? Because the business is constantly evolving, but the fact is you still need great songs, great live show, and the ability to stay the course. What do, what do you tell them? The art of making music is a craft. You have to be terrific at your craft because being merely fantastic isn't good enough. And you have to withstand the slings and arrows of all those who don't want you to succeed because this is a business of what I call the two R's, relationships and rejection. <laughs> How to overcome one and cultivate the other. And if you think you're talented, the industry may not owe you a living. So you have to get in there with a strategy and you have to not give up. You have to cannot take no for an answer. Understand that validation comes from within. So whatever people say don't really matter as long as you've got a great plan A. If your plan B sucks, for sure you're going to succeed.